um, and it's, I mean, it's kind of Irish Catholic. I'm, I'm from Scotland, if you can't tell with the accent, but um, yeah, Not Glasgow. Uh, I'm from Glasgow, absolutely. <laughs> but like, um, Irish Catholic family, very, very, like, up, kind, of, kind of strict upbringing, um, and, and kind of the church is very, um, very iconic, very proper, very, um, very important um, mm-hmm. for the for the for the for the, for the, for the growing up. I was an altar boy. Blah blah, all that sort of thing. Although seven years an altar boy, not one priest tried to fuck me. So fucking ridiculous, <laughs> you know. So their father, love your handbag, nice no, nothing. You know what I mean? Fuck whatever. Um, but but um, yeah, no, I did did the whole Catholic thing for years. Um, and the, what actually kind of like kind of like pomp and ceremony and the the glamour of the Catholic Church. Um, actually <laughs> kind of inspired the drag. Like mm-hmm. I like I would go to church and I, I love the whole the whole drama the dramatic the theatrics of it. You know, because you know what, what is dra- what is what is Sunday mass? It's just drag brunch, really, isn't it? A guy in a dress, you know, giving out bread and wine, making everyone <laughs> sing songs. It's fucking drag brunch. It's what I do every Sunday. <laughs> so yeah, I just see, I kind of see it as a, um, you know, like a something just exactly the same. But yeah, the the characters kind of did have an influence because, of course, I mean, if I would go into all the the highs and lows and dramas of you know being a queer or being a a gay kid, um, in the nineties in Scotland. Um, under the Catholic Church, like you know, I you know, I first knew I was different, and I first knew that I, I first was bullied, I suppose, or being or told that you know you you weren't right or you weren't you weren't correct, um, by my family mm. and by the Catholic Church, not by peers. That came later. Everyone, everyone figured had me figured out before I had me figured <laughs> figured out. So um, how old were you when you figured it out? I mean, I was straight until I was twenty. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, girlfriend, a lot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I, but um, you but you you were consciously aware that you were gay and hiding course, it. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I knew like and everyone kind of says this kind of become a cliche. Now. We all I always knew I was different. Mm. You know, I always knew that I you know I didn't like the like the regular stuff, the football, all that's not that was not for me. I was uh I was definitely the one wearing wearing mum shoes and all that sort of <laughs> drama. Um and you know. I was in theater, I did dance and that sort of thing, and uh, so I knew I was I was I was different from the other boys, and then same sex attraction didn't really kick off until um funny enough um <laughs> it was my dad's fault actually um i uh i was years I kind of like not want to do football, and then he kind of like said like come on let's do try something let's go to rugby and rugby I'm sure most of you know is probably the most homoerotic sport in the world um <laughs> and it was then when I was like oh shit this is brilliant <laughs> but for a different reason yeah and that's kind of when I was like I figured out like okay this is what I am but big secret and it was I remember I I, I, you know, I managed to come out to a guidance teacher when I was like 16 and said like I think I might be blah 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 and he takes a priest right away <laughs> you know and you know it was just it was something it's never allowed to be um and then it, I mean, it was, I, I will always kind of bring it back to like the church is like a big, big, a, a big indicator, a big, a big problem, you know, a big problem, um, for me at that time, and uh, that's what kind of kept me in about it. And it wasn't, I was not that I was a big believer or anything, but you get brainwashed, you get mm. completely like, like this is this is what it is, this is what you believe, this is you know, there was there was no cut turn away from it. And even though I didn't, I wasn't a big believer by the time I was sixteen, seventeen, like I wasn't a church goer, I wasn't part of the Catholic Church, but I had all the damage had been done. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't already believe like like okay, I can't be this whatever whatever it was I was. I remember I was told by a, a nun, um, who had me figured out again before I had me figured out. Um, she said that um, the Lord God will forgive your thought impure thoughts, but He will not forgive impure acts. That's what I was told. When I was fifteen, <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't know if she was talking about wanking or gay. I don't know what she was talking about, but I had, I kind of had it figured out and I understood. Um, mm. um and so repress repress i didn't want i didn't want it so it came i came from it came from a bit of all that and then self-loathing and all that sort of thing and it wasn't until yeah i was really after i left uni until i figured out like no but interestingly um alongside that drag always put a, i was always i was always in drag <laughs> in some way or another um i was always like you know, and i was always dressing up halloween was always the, the kind of ample time for it in secret um i'm sure other gay boys out there will definitely um, recognise putting the t-shirt on your head and that was your hair, a up, little up to it, absolutely, we all did it. Um, and and yes, yeah, so it was always it was always there. And, um, and then it kind of came out more when it, it was actually when I moved to, to Spain from Scotland. 
where I was able to kind of go, like, basically start again mm. in a new place, new environment, n- you know, new people, and just be the exactly who I should have been the whole time, but didn't let myself be that way. Yeah, because I, I find that the, um, like, my, my dad's side of the family is Irish Catholic, so I have some experience in going and in going to mass like when we go to ireland and stuff we don't go anymore but my dad's always hated religion and hated the institution hated everything like that um but i remember him telling me and i know some of the people in in the area that that it happened to that they told me that if when you were younger they suspected you were gay you would be sent off to be a priest to be like converted and if you were and even and on the on the female side of it if you happen to be raped or something by, you know, a family member or a cousin, oh, you'd yeah. then be impure and then they would send you off to be a nun. Off to the, off, off to the mad ones. Yeah, sisters. exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you end up you end up with these, you know, repressed, for, for men, repressed gay men yeah. being trained by priests who may also be repressed gay men. You know, not all of them. Obviously, there are, there are plenty of priests that go into it just because it's a good job, of really, course. and they like it. But yeah. then you do end up with this cycle of abuse. Yeah and repression and weird kind of sexual energy that's all trapped and all these poor girls that have been raped through no fault of their own that then end up in there and it's it's horrible yeah. oh, it's, it's really awful, horrible awful. thinking about and, st- and still the repercussions are still being suffered you know especially in ireland jesus that place <laughs> yeah um, but the repercussions are still being you know like still coming out now and all the scandals and everything and it's still there and it's just that i'm just glad i'm out of it my my mum, my mother's still a, a, a believer and an attender, mm. um, but but I allow you know we, we kind of came to kind of an agreement like okay you do what you want but I have got a real it's not just like a, oh I don't believe it it's a real like it's a vendetta like a hatred I have for it because it I feel like it robbed me in the first fucking twenty years mm. you know of like of me being being a hundred percent like okay no because now I look at kids now and uh, it shows I don't know if you've seen the show on the, the show Heartstopper on mm. Netflix a lot of people have it like, basically teenagers gay teenagers and I'm like that how fucking dare you <laughs> you know like i'm fucking so i'm so jealous of it at the same time so delighted that we're out in a world that that's the case but you know i feel like you know these fucking queer teenagers not suffering like the way i suffered <laughs> it's so annoying um but yeah no, i mean i love it of course it's it, brilliant that we've come that we're, that we're now at that stage but i do feel like a tinge of like envy and, and rage and and it is that i mean not just the Catholic Church. There was a, there was a yeah, whole fucking course. societal shift has happened in the past, like even between five and ten years. You know, things have like changed for for, for the better, of course. Um, and and yeah. So, but I still look, I still look back and feel that the Catholic Church had a major part to play in that for me. You know. But it's super interesting what you mention about the the kind of theatrics of the church because. Right. There is a beauty to ceremony. There is a beauty to, tra- in, in my opinion, anyway, a beauty to, tra- to tradition, right. ceremony, ritual, and I think it's something that we are drawn towards. It's camp. <laughs> it is <very laughs> the, camp, the, yeah. royal, the royal family camp. You know, yeah, yeah. And, I, and as a Scottish person, I'm a staunch anti-monarchist, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I watch it and I go, "Oh my god, it's fantastic!" Like it's, you know, I watched the her funeral, you know, and it was just camp. It's fabulous, <laughs> yeah. and yep. yeah, there, there's everyone, and even British people kind of like we have that. It, it's it's inners as well, mm. uh, that pageantry and pomp and ceremony. It's just yeah, yeah, and like even just dressing people up to the high heavens, mm-hmm. you know, and the what they call the royal guard, where they wear those big red outfits and the the, oh, the black, beefeaters, the yeah. beefeaters, sorry. <laughs> um like i was watching the megan and harry documentary today and it's oh, actually really interesting because i don't really know anything about the royal family um but it's just interesting it shines a light on partly on some of the ceremony that's involved but partly on um just the paparazzi involvement and like you cannot imagine how crazy it is without being experienced in it but then they're explaining it and you're like oh my god like there's people imagine having people surrounding your house all the time nice. trying to take photos through your windows and stuff and Wild. while you're then but what they said was that when will and kate came to visit them megan didn't realize that that formality and like pageantry actually extends 
into private life. Oh yeah. So it's, it's all hierarchy. It's, it's all, all hierarchy. It's all, and yeah, like, uh -huh. I mean, even though it's his brother, her brother-in-law and her sister-in-law, they're coming over and she's there, said she's wearing like jeans and no shoes or something and gave them a hug and they were just like, couldn't handle it. Yeah, and all this not... stuff. Cause <laughs> she thought it would just be like, you know, that's on show yeah. and then behind closed doors, it's normal. But she said, it's so ingrained. I thought that was so interesting. Oh.